What do the experts say about what we can eat to keep our brains healthy and protect against dementia? Dr. Gregory Jica, a neurologist who teaches at the University of Kentucky, is studying the link between diet and brain health. Dr. Jica says studies show that people who've maintained healthy levels of cholesterol over time seem to have a lower risk of dementia. The best way to regulate your cholesterol health and fat health, as well as brain health, is really to modify the diet. And so we see things like recommendations for the Mediterranean or the Mind Diet. We're talking uh, rich in vegetables, olive oils, rather than saturated fatty oils, nuts and fish, and things that are brain healthy in general. And a lot of that does indeed have to do with the fat content and the different types of fats and cholesterol found in those foods. Other researchers are looking at how consuming less food can affect our brain health. Dr. Benjamin Bickman, a molecular scientist who teaches cell biology and physiology at Brigham Young University, explores how not just what we eat, but the way we eat can affect dementia risk. In particular, he has studied how intermittent fasting and ketogenic diets can help boost ketones and give the brain the energy it needs to protect itself from diseases like Alzheimer's. We actually were able to get tissue from tissue donors and study the difference in gene expression between those genes that are involved in glucose burning versus ketone burning in people who had died with Alzheimer's disease and with no Alzheimer's disease. And it was the glucose burning genes that were compromised, not the ketone burning genes. And that is so powerful because if a person has an energetic gap, well then let the brain eat ketones and ketones can more than fill that energetic gap and indeed improve cognitive performance. While fasting may have its benefits, there comes a time in every diet to make choices on what foods to prioritize. We asked Bickman how he advises his own family to eat. I believe that there's three rules. Control carbohydrates, prioritize protein, good quality protein, which is always going to be animal. I know that's uncomfortable to say nowadays. And last, don't be afraid of fat. Now back to the first one, because sugar falls into the control carbohydrates category. I have three kids, so I feel the pain here. I try to not present any food as illegal or off limits. And so I have tried to have just very casual conversations where I say, okay, you want a little pack of gummies? Have you had any protein lately? Can you have a beef stick? What about a hard boiled egg? These proteins always come with fat. And I want my kids and my wife and I to always be eating real natural fats that always come with proteins let the fat come with the protein the way nature intended it. Some experts say there are other things to consider beyond just what's in the diet. Dr. Dwayne Meller, a dietitian who teaches at the Aston Medical School in the United Kingdom, says eating is a social practice, and that's important for brain health too. When we had the pandemic, people started not eating together. They just stopped socializing. And that socializing around food is something that we risk losing, but we need to maintain and that sharing healthy food with other people is part of what we are as social creatures and we need to remember it's not just a biology it's a social aspect of our food behaviors which contribute to our overall health our brain health our mental health and our physical health